All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, how many people actually know Drupal? All right. Um, a good a good amount of people. So for those that don't know Drupal, uh, Drupal is open source software, and I'll explain that in a bit. Um, but it's effectively software that people use to build websites. You know, just like you would use PowerPoint to create a presentation, uh, you use Drupal to create your website. Um, this is me 12 years ago out of my dorm room in, in Belgium where I started Drupal. Um, I kind of started it by accident, to be honest, because I just wanted to create a message board. And as you can see, I was your typical geek. Um, at my assembly books, my chessboard, my collection of stamps. So basically, all of the checkboxes checked. Uh, and so what I did is I created this piece of software and I decided to make it available for free. So I gave it away um, and everybody could download and use it. And what happened is that over the course of 12 years, um, a lot of people uh, decided to, to basically chip in and help you know, add to the software. And so uh, fast forward uh, 12 years and now you know, roughly one out of 50 websites, actually a little bit more, one out of 50 websites in the world um, you know, are built on Drupal. Um, we have over 15,000 modules or extensions, you know, little pieces of, app, like, you know, very similar to apps on the iPhone, you know, things that people can download to extend uh, their website. And an example module could be a blogging module or a forum module and, and so forth. Um, also interesting is that our website uh, Drupal.org, we get 1.5 million unique visitors a month, which uh, kind of blows me away because it's a pretty boring website <laughs> about, um, you know, just a piece of technology. It's not like it's your local newspaper or, you know, some other, um, you know, popular destination on the web. Um, so a lot of websites are built on Drupal from whitehouse.gov to Mitt Romney's website to pretty much every major artist in the world, Britney Spears, Michael Jackson, the Rolling Stones, um, Justin Bieber. <laughs> uh, so a lot of different artists, a lot of different universities. Um, in fact, 71 of the world's top 100 universities um, use Drupal in a very significant way, including Harvard's main website um, You know that is built on Drupal. Um, so what's special about Drupal compared to our competitors is that Drupal is open source. And for those that um, don't know open source, open source effectively means that the user gets four freedoms. The first freedom is a freedom to actually run the program, and that means you can download it, you don't have to pay a license fee, it's free, and you can install it and use it, in our case, to build your website. But that doesn't um, you know, differentiate open source from, say, um, freeware. So there's these three additional freedoms, and that's a freedom to study the program, meaning you can look at the source code, you can study how it's built, um, how it's architected. Um, and then on top of that, the third freedom, it actually allows you to make changes to the program. So if you find a bug, you can fix it. Or if you have an idea for an improvement to make it faster, to make it better, to add functionality, you can actually do that as well. And then the fourth freedom is actually a very important freedom, and that's a freedom to chain, uh, to you know, redistribute the program, so you can actually share the changes that you've made, uh, you know, with other people. And so Drupal has grown so fast, um, you know, because it's cheaper, it's less expensive. But that's not the only thing. It's it's also winning because it's actually better. And so, uh, open source people often think you know it's great. Um, because it's free, but really what happens is those additional three freedoms, you know, freedom two to four, um, it actually encourages collaboration. Um, you know, it encourages people to share. And as a result, open source is not just a software license, it's actually a development model. Um, and so to give you an example, uh, Drupal 7, which is our current main version of Drupal, I've actually accepted patches from over a thousand different people. So more than a, a thousand different people, you know, actively contributed to making that version of Drupal, and that's just the base version of Drupal that I'm talking about. There's, as I mentioned, over fifteen thousand, you know, modules or extensions, and each of those extensions have been developed by one or more people as well. So in total, we have you know, tens of thousands of people 
that altogether built uh, the software. And that's highly disruptive because um, even our biggest competitors, proprietary competitors, they may have engineering teams of 50 to 100 people, but certainly they don't have you know tens of thousands of people building the software. So um, again, open source uh, leads to collaboration, and in our case, collaboration leads to community. Um, and here is a photo um, of one of our events. Uh, we have these events all around the world. Thousands of people attend them. Actually, last weekend, I was in California. Um, there was an event called Bad Camp, which is the Bay Area Drupal Camp. Uh, it was over 1,500 people. Um, we have bigger events even where you know we have 4,000 people show up. Um, so it, and these events are happening all around the world. So every weekend, there will be these events in major cities around the world uh, where hundreds to thousands of people show up to work together and help make Drupal better. So again, um, open source, uh, it's not just a license, it actually leads to collaboration, leads to this huge, huge community with thousands and thousands of people. And it's actually that community that translates into a lot of innovation. And then as a result, open source actually wins, or at least mature open source projects, they win not just because it's cheaper or less expensive, but it's actually better. And it's better because the fact so many people um, you know, contribute to it. And so uh, in terms of business models, um, you know, Drupal and open source in general, um, they're a huge you know, catalyst for uh, creative destruction. I don't know how many people know uh, Schumpeter, but uh, I was an economist that had this you know, concept, uh, concept of creative destruction, which basically he said that um, you know, to create more value and to, you know, to, to change, change the game, you actually have to destroy something. And so in, in many ways what's happening here is we are kind of changing the way um, we develop software through open source. We're changing the way people build websites. I didn't really talk about that. Um, but the way we do things in Drupal is fundamentally different from um, the way our competitors work. Um, but in doing so, we're also changing our industry. The way we sell Drupal, the way we market Drupal, all of these things are being, um, you know, disrupted. So, um, and then as a little bonus, uh, something that I like to talk about is in doing so, we actually do well financially. Like, you know, we also started a company called Acquia. And so we're doing well in terms of, you know, we're a growing successful company. But in, in being so, we're also doing a lot of good. Meaning, in making Drupal better, we also enable lots and lots of organizations from govern, you know, governments um, that are trying to change the way they interact or participate with citizens to helping a lot of large and small nonprofits from Amnesty that's using Drupal to Greenpeace to Doctors Without Borders, which you know are standardizing on Drupal. We're actually enabling all of these organizations to better fulfill their mission. So not only are we changing our industry, we're also enabling a lot of um, other organizations to do well. So um, that's a little bit of background on Drupal. So let's move on to the second part of this, delivering and capturing value. This is all about how do you actually take your product or service to market, and how do you do that in a disruptive way? And again, I'm going to jump right in with a startup secret. There are two things I like to try to get people to think about here, multipliers and levers. And each of them plays a role. The multiplier is really about how do you get more out of your life cycle value of your customer. In other words, how do you get more revenue out of them? How do you increase the reach to get to them? And how do you increase the coverage of how they use your products and services? And so levers are um, uh, the exact opposite of that. They are how do you reduce the time to deliver your product or service? How do you reduce the costs in, in doing so? And how do you reduce the resources in it? And what Dries just talked about is all of those things actually in the Drupal uh, delivery. So Dries, just to come back up here and, and wrap this up in business model terms, can you talk about how what Drupal's open source project does in terms of providing these multipliers and levers. Sure. So as, as you mentioned, our core is a you know, very small piece of technology which is architected to be very, very extensible and flexible. And so as a result, one of the multipliers is you know, this, this community that I talked about that is adding functionality every day. And they're adding that functionality, not Acquia as a company. And so it's kind of magically happening. It's like, 
you know, from Aqua's point of view or from any other Drupal company's point of view, it's like we have this massive engineering force out there. You know, people adding those um, those features and functionality, and you know, with that is also another multiplier, which is a community reach. The fact that um, so many people are using Drupal in so many different use cases, uh, and it's a completely new way of doing, you know, product management even. Um, and then um, to talk about the levers. Um, so one thing which, as I mentioned already, one thing which we have to do a lot less of as a company is we need to spend less, um, you know, time and effort, you know, actually building Drupal itself. And so we can focus our time and effort on building, you know, other things. <laughs> um, and same thing with marketing. It's, it's amazing to see how passionate some of these people are in the community. They have, you know, like Drupal tattoos, T-shirts. It's like <laughs> uh, the amount of marketing that they do for us uh, is, is pretty, um, pretty overwhelming. Actually, if you want to check out what they do, just Google, you know, Drupal on Flickr or some other photo sharing site, and you'll be amazed by some of the passion that these people have and how that translates in a, in a, a marketing advantage. <laughs>